Hi, Candida. Hi, good day. How are you doing? <laughs> I am doing so well. I'm excited to do this interview with you because without realizing it, um, I thought of you as a change maker and I actually decided I was labeling this interview my change maker interview number one oh. because I want to do a change maker series. Right. And the reason that I reached out to you as my first change maker is because you are younger and you epitomize the hope for the new generation and for the world. Oh, and in terms of so the sweet. Power, so, um, so I have high hopes. I've never taught you, but you did go to the university where I taught, where I teach. Yes, yes. Um, and I am so thrilled that you agreed to, without much pushing at all, one request, <laughs> and you were like, yes. Yeah, sure, no problem. And here's why I'm so surprised. Because today, just before we came on for this interview, Dee Dee told me that she's actually one of the 40 under 40 influencers in Trinidad and Tobago for 2019. And her Facebook page has 18,000 followers. <laughs> now, I didn't think that I was worthy to be with important people oh like me. <laughs> but lucky me she said yes and she's so down to earth and so warm oh, that i'm excited I'm to be here it's a nice experience that's great and i hope that this is the first of many many interviews like this that you can do because you have so much value that you will add and i know you have added and you will tell us a little bit more about that today Definitely. so i have a quick introduction of you that i want to do with my um my viewers sure. um so i'm saying didi because she said she actually prefers the name didi yes. but her name as you see on the banner below is candida can mm -hmm. and candida's um social media page on facebook she has many um social media pages but the facebook one is titled didi the trinity the trinity <laughs> dn Mm -hmm. And DN stands for dietitian nutritionist. <laughs> so, and uh, like I said, she has eighteen thousand plus followers on there, and her in because of that influence that she has been building, she is a forty under forty influencer in Trinidad and Tobago um, in twenty nineteen, and I dare say she's quickly becoming an influencer on the Caribbean and the world stage. <laughs> so, last year was a bumper year for. Didi, because the Ministry of Sport and Youth Affairs in our country also awarded her the 2019 Youth Award yes. for Health and Wellness. And so I'm seeing it peeping there. <laughs> um, so you realize that she still has the blush of youth in her face and all the, you know, the cute chubby cheeks of a young person. Um, I suspect that her youth also comes from the way that she eats and lives. And so she'll start to tell us some of the secrets as we get into the interview. Didi has worked in this field formally since about 2013. That was the year before she started, she finished the BSc in Nutrition and Dietetics, that was 2014. She very quickly moved on to earn an internship and she got a further diploma in her field in 2015 so see how much she's climbing steps right and i'm saying this exactly for my students like a good teacher would oh. and she moved straight into jamaica uh, where she got her msc in nutrition in 2017. so she is taking passion in her heart for eating and living healthily she's doing that behind the scenes even as she's a student and then when she becomes certified in her field she says, that's not enough. What's my vision for the long term? And she builds those competencies and she backs it up with action because dreams don't come true unless you act, right? And for those who enter religion, God says, yes, believe and I'll see about you. But he also says, pick yourself up and do something about it. So I see her as a good role model for not just people her age, but people like me too, who want oh, to change. Um, <laughs> So good, good, good job, um, oh, Didi. 
So I'm going to turn it over to you a little bit, Didi, to sure. give me any introduction elements that I may have missed. What are the gaps that I've put in that I've left out there that you want to put in? Well, we said a lot, which is like really uh, <laughs> So um, the main thing is that I, what I'm trying to do is promote health and wellness throughout the Caribbean and throughout uh, anyone who wants to hear about health and wellness. Because honestly, chronic diseases are plague in every single country around the world. And it's all about making healthy lifestyle changes and that's going to impact your health positively because health is well. And what you're gonna do without your help? You really can't do anything without it. So my passion stems from my degree because I understood that in the long, like in the early stages, and you are what you eat. Lifestyle is very important. It's not only really diet that I focus on, but it's the entire lifestyle of an individual. The stress factors, the daily routines, what they have to go through, the exercise routines, everything that encompasses a healthy human. Right. So my passion grew from then, and then. I'm definitely not like the norm of a dietitian and what dietitians typically do because the norm is to definitely work in a hospital and a health center. And I just never, throughout the internship, I never thought that that was really what I was supposed to do in the long run. I just felt like that environment did not allow me to grow and develop into the person I needed to be. So I did work a little in the private sector and then I went and got international experience with Bermuda and that really um, empowered me a lot to start my own uh, consultancy, so the nutrition consultancy where I can help individuals with their health and wellness. So I do think that uh, I'm definitely not with the norm it's a job, I'm definitely more in the trip entrepreneurship of uh, life. <laughs> it is risky but it's way more rewarding and I feel a lot happier doing what I do kind of Okay. <laughs> so what I didn't hear and so I I also want to hear about the person behind this and and um certainly your heart is showing through but from from stalking you a little bit to learn about <laughs> I I know that you also have a personal story about your discovery about the need to eat healthy and so on. Would you be willing to share that? Of course. So I think you're referring to the, the time when I was fat. <laughs> well, you tell me. What yeah, so, is my story? Um, I mean, I did have that fat stage when I was younger. So I was like, all babies are fat. And then I had the skinny stage growing up. And then when I was coming into my teens, more like maybe 10 to 12, I was a bit chubby. And I was, well, Chubby was my nickname at that point because I had like ripples everywhere. And all my friends and family was like, I'm around my age, was small. And then I had like an international experience. I went to China because my whole family, um, well, we moved there because my dad got a job. And everyone there was small as well. So I felt so misplaced because the culture was different. So I went to British international schools. Everyone was well, white to colored skin. And I was the only Indian. I was the only brown colored skin in the class. And in I think the whole school, they only had like three of us that were actually brown colored. So I felt misplaced in that way. And I felt misplaced because I was also chubby. And so I started to exercise and I started to work on myself and I lost the weight when I was like, I kept losing weight every single year. And by the time I turned 14, I was like a good size and I was healthy basically in terms of like my body composition. Right. And then I came back from China and I came into form six in Trinidad and then I went through like a whole depression cycle because again, culture shock and different change in environments. And I felt like I was bullied a lot in form six. So I started to gain weight and it was really stressful. And then uh, after when I started university, I started a degree and I started to uh, fix my diet aspect of it and make little lifestyle changes and understand the impact and the importance of lifestyle changes on your health and wellness. I started to lose back the weight and then I was able to maintain that weight loss for years because I always practice what I preach, right? <laughs> so it, it definitely was like a little more closer, right? But um, at the end of it, I was able to maintain a healthy body condition and understand of all about health and wellness and okay. lifestyle changes and all that. 
So one of the things that I've learned, I actually lost about 20 pounds last year. And oh, wow. through, through healthy eating as well. And that's why you stood out to me. Because <laughs> I learned so much in my journey of exploring um, how to eat healthy and, and how what I thought a square meal was from being taught in school wasn't a square meal. Um, um, that shocked me because my parents, my mother was a principal and my dad was a vice principal and both of them focused on eating well. My, my father was actually a vegetarian. Okay. You know, but, but the portions of different things on the plate, I think yeah. were food. Um, but I didn't understand those things. At least I didn't understand what was right for me. Right. Until last year, I decided, okay, Marsh, for 10 years, you haven't been so healthy. And we're going to change that today. Because I have a special needs daughter, and I decided, how do I stay with her as long as possible? Yeah. And it means that I have to do the uncomfortable thing, which is face the facts about what I wasn't doing well. Right. Um, and that was like the best thing I could have done. Good news, my husband is on the journey doing it with me now. Oh, that's so and, nice. Uh, yeah, it's so <laughs> much easier when we both do thing, things together. Definitely. If you um, have the support, that is very important. Like That's why with my programs, I am like a support system for persons because with all that support, you would not be able to achieve. Exactly. So the, the lucky thing for me is that when I did this program, I eventually, when I did my little program, I eventually found a program of my own. And I'll interview somebody with that. I don't want to, to take somebody's <laughs> program and put it in here. Uh, but we had a community on Facebook. And that right. community, it was like, okay, if you're going to be tempted to eat the things that you know are causing you to be pre-diabetic, for example, mm -hmm talk to one of us here and we will help you and you help us that right. counts right that's really so, nice so how did you find that sort of support when you were improving your health well i found it in myself <laughs> right so because i didn't have purpose. that sort of, strength yeah. of purpose definitely self-motivated because if i listened to other people i would not be anywhere that i would be telling you honestly awesome. Honestly. Interesting. Okay, yeah. so you have mentioned that health to you, so far anyway, um, one of the, the ways that you measure your health is by looking at your body metrics. Yes. Body and I'm assuming that you're talking about body fat percentage, yes. skeletal muscle percentage, mm -hmm. BMI. Yes, what's up? Um, Hydration um, status, bone mass, all of that. And you actually scientifically measure these things? I have a machine. <laughs> okay, one so of those scales that you step yeah, on? Yeah, okay. scales, yeah. So, so do so I. I use my favorite thing out. Um, <laughs> it, it's so cool that now my husband, myself, and my, um, my nurse who's, who helps us with our daughter, right. we both measure ourselves and we have a plan to do it this week. Good. It's so we're trying to make sure body fat is what's going on. No yeah, muscle and water is improving, and bone right. is going down and all of that. So it's definitely very important to look at your body composition and see what you're made of. But the other thing, when we talk about non-scale measures of health, mm -hmm. is how we feel in our skin. A hundred percent. Could you tell me how that changed for you when you think you became healthier? How did you feel before, and how did how do you feel now, or how did you feel after? Right. So I think thinking back like I did not function as effectively I wasn't as productive because when you have a lot of body fat uh, and your mental health is not where it should be and you tend is that to because you have brain fog like it's sort of like that yeah okay. so you're not focused you're not able to do the things that you need to do on a daily and it's definitely because of that high body fat percent in your body and that's why when that body fat went down and went away i was more productive i was more focused i was able to accomplish and do figure out what goals i have and how to reach them and everything so i was definitely more productive with less body fat definitely 100 percent more focused like the mental part of it is so important it is as well how you feel and right. when you don't have as much body fat in your healthy body composition, you feel better and mentally you'll be happier. 
<laughs> so that will help you overall with everything, every aspect of your life. Okay, so it boosts your confidence, your happiness, Definitely. your clarity yeah. of thought, your motivation. Yes. All right, that sounds great. So let's let's we have a 15 minute introduction that we've just done of you. Okay. Um, but one last thing, because now I want to understand your philosophy. What's the philosophy on which you've built this business that you have? Right. So definitely help is wealth. And that's what I preach because honestly, if you look at every single crime disease, every single health issue that persons have, if you have an, a health issue, how are you able to do anything? You really can't. So help and is definitely wealth and is definitely more important than anything else. If you have that ability, if you have that health with you, you'll be able to do everything else. So health, I think, is the number one most important aspect of life. And that is exactly what I build my stuff on. And because chronic disease is the main part of life that definitely sets you back, because it's at high blood pressure, it's high sugar levels, high cholesterol levels, heart disease, and then you just put on medication and you just sold with a life of pills and your function is reduced, the quality of life is reduced. You're not able to enjoy life the way that you should. So that's definitely what I'm trying to do with my programs to help to reduce that chronic disease issues that we have through health and wellness, through lifestyle changes to help to person's quality of life to be a lot better in the end. So that's, that's definitely what right. the foundation of my business is. All right. And and so what you're saying is that your focus is on health. It's not necessarily only on nutrition. Right. Exactly. Because my first impression of you, because you hear DD the Trinity DN, mm -hmm. I decided okay, she's into nutrition. But right. you have a broader philosophy. It's not definitely. just eating a whole holistic approach on lifestyle changes. So okay. it's definitely not only about what you eat, but it's about your whole lifestyle. All right, and I'll be asking yeah. you a little bit more about that and how that yeah, works. no problem. Um, so you have been building a, a really amazing business. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a science background. I'm an engineer right. by training. Right. And in my schooling, entrepreneurship was not something that was focused on. I remember being very stressed about, will I get a job? Will I get a job? And it never once entered my head that I could open a business um, or that I should open a business. Uh, it's, it's that you had to go work for somebody who was already more established and there were certain kinds of people and somebody simple like me from, I come from Pool Village and um, outside of Rio Claro. So somebody simple like me from a rural background, mm -mm, people like you don't run businesses. Mm -hmm. So when I see you, I like this because I teach students in a strategy class and I want, and I teach health and safety and quality and I want those kids to understand that you don't have to depend on anybody else. And in fact, your hours and hours of hard work don't have to make income for somebody else who's already well off. Exactly. You should be building your life. And yeah. so and I also want to celebrate that you're an entrepreneurial person. Definitely. So can you tell me a little bit about the arms of your business yes. and about what you dream of for your business? Right. So I would have never thought that I would have been an entrepreneur. <laughs> I didn't know that I had that sort of backbone because you would, like, everyone wanted me to follow the trend of what a nutritionist does, what a dietitian does, always with the hospital, with a private company, with And that's what I tried to do after my master's and after my internship. And I just realized that the environment, the working environment, was not building my skills, was not building me in a positive way, it was not helping me to go where I needed to go in life. And it just kept me back, honestly. So, so you felt only, like you were in a rut and you'd be yeah. repeating the same day groundhog day. It's just a very toxic spiral trying to fit in what I'm not meant to fit in sort of environment. Wow. And 
it was honestly more more recent that the entrepreneurship skills came in because I got rid of like I was in a bad relationship. Got <laughs> so I came out of a bad relationship, came back from Bermuda, which was it was a fantastic experience. But honestly, I was being taken advantage of, and I realized that. Like that environment allowed me to realize my worth, and that's why I was so grateful for the experience because I was basically drained for every ounce of myself. And while somebody else was getting rich and like moving up, and I was doing everything, like I was bringing in every like all of the assets on one, but I wasn't getting any of it. And this person was just going up and out, starving. Right, right. So I, it really was uh, like. A shock and it was like it opened this door mm -hmm. and I realized that why can't I do this on my own you know so that's why when I came back and I started to rethink and try to like figure out where I want to be and where I want to go and how I could build my programs to suit and help persons and reach persons who I need of health advice so that's when I came up with the shape me TV weight loss program and it's basically encompassing everything. So it's exercising, nutrition, counseling, healthy cooking sessions, and the grocery shopping tour to help them come up with a healthy grocery shopping list. Talk about nutrition facts, labels, everything. So it's more of a holistic approach. And then after Shape Me DD, I, I did a diabetic program. So I educated myself about diabetes a little bit more. And I was like, well, I want to create a program to help diabetics, to empower and educate diabetics as to how they can manage their blood sugar levels. And that's when I came up with Beat the Sweet with Didi. And then after that was just what a general you know? Beat the Sweet. Beat the Sweet with Didi. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then I came up with a general package for um crying diseases. So the Shape Me Didi and Beat the Sweet with Didi the names came from my sister. She's very good at coming up with fun names. So I allowed her to come up with them. Uh -huh. And um and then Didi's Nutrition Consultancy, I just put that, put the programs underneath that title, and that was officially the business so it definitely was like everything that i experienced the past few years allowed me to to understand that i'm not going to follow the norm and it's okay and i can do this on my own and do what i want to do, do what i'm passionate about help persons with their health and wellness and also be able to achieve everything that i have to achieve and it honestly helps me in the long run because if you're passionate about what you do which i am and i love what i do it definitely improves how you feel it improves your health and it gives you such positive energy like i feel like i'm so much happier and i wouldn't rather i wouldn't want to be anywhere else in life you know like this is what i want to do this is what i'm best at and definitely person see results with my programs and it just makes me so happy that i'm finally able to do what i love to do and help persons with their health and wellness and also get the rewards as well. so i've heard i've heard that you have three things three things in your program that you do yes. um you do beat the sweet with dd yes. with for diabetics yes you do a general um service for chronic disease as a whole and then you do one which is just generally shaping up yes so that's to help people just to become healthier in general yes um, and with their body composition because normally with the programs the body fat goes down which is great right. so that is it <laughs> right and of course going getting a body fat to go down we're talking about within healthy limits yes um yes, yes. So the aim is not just to keep stripping away your body fat. The aim is to get into healthy ranges because yes. then it's going to be more balanced. Um, but there's more to your business than this. I mm -hmm. saw, again with my, let's call it research. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I saw that you have a presence on Amazon as well. So right. tell us about how you're building that side of the business and why you wanted to do that. Right. So actually, um, before Bermuda and when I was looking for a job, I used to develop all of these programs. I used to think about everything that I wanted to do. And it's only because Bermuda gave me the platform to do it that I was able to accomplish everything. And then I worked on a book, Shave Me Didi. <laughs> I mean, not it's a recipe book, but I sell it as a Shave Me Didi. And it's basically simple, quick and easy recipe. So I put it on Amazon as well. And um, it's just fun, easy, like, I just use like my cartoon to create like a fun sort of book um, and it helps persons to prepare 
healthy meals that not really going to take a lot of time in the kitchen basically. Right. and i also have a diabetic book that's just general information to help us better understand the condition and different ways in which they could manage it so that one is more for like feed the sweet with baby um so those are the two books so far and i'm working on one because i love chocolate i'm like a chocolate like with dark chocolate <laughs> because dark chocolate has a lot of benefits and it has all the antioxidant properties so it's really good for your health maybe that's what keeps me looking like, so you have to i don't know <laughs> but i have the i love dark chocolate a lot so i'm doing a cookbook for recipes using chocolate pure cho like chocolate recipes chocolate bowl <laughs> That will be low in fat, low in calories, and as well easy to prepare. All right. So, I, you know what, what I was just floored by. I'm looking at your recipe book, yeah. and there I see more evidence that Didi is is creative and entrepreneurial. Why? You actually developed a cartoon of yourself, so you have an avatar, and you're using that to build your business as well. Where did you get that idea? Who came up with it for you? Who, who actually created the the um? Well, there's there are apps on um. I was looking at a, a cartoon version of myself because I wanted this book. I didn't actually have good quality pictures per se yet, so I wanted to use cartoons. And there is like an app that I use to create my animations. Okay. Yeah, so I use my phone to create the animation and then I just downloaded all of the images and created the what you see like in the book. Right? All right. <laughs> and for those of us, so I have a group of students, several students who, who created their own ebooks last semester and uploaded yeah. to sell them on, on Amazon. How easy was it for you to, to get your work on Amazon and to get sales and how are you, how are you doing that? So it's easy to get it on Amazon and honestly the appearance matters so understanding like depending on what you use so I actually use PowerPoint to create my booklet and save it as PDF but Amazon makes it easy they have different steps that can help you to upload um, the images and the, the information pretty quickly so it's all about making that book that's probably the lengthy part of it and making sure that the margins are suitable for us basically okay. sales i actually get more sales in person than on amazon i just put it on amazon so that whoever has access to amazon and wants to get it could get it on that platform right. but i do sell it in a physical form which is the best part for me because right. i sold with the program so there's no just two trips. But what I look forward to is seeing you marketing your Amazon books more because maybe your international audience didn't know about you yet and they're starting to know about you. The more people know about you, the more they will go in search of your work. True, true, true. <laughs> so, Didi, it has been such a pleasure talking yes. to you today. Um, you continue to be inspiring to me and I'll continue to follow you. Thank um, you. I appreciate this so much. This is really nice. <laughs> oh, thank you. I want my son to look at this video because we have to change what we see as the limitations in our society, and these are the ways that we do them. Definitely. Because um, honestly, it's either you follow your dream or you allow somebody to pay you to follow theirs. Wow, I love that. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing that I love is I once heard a saying that in our youth we chase finances and we play with our health and in our old age we take our savings and we get back that health exactly. doesn't sound sensible at all oh, and the quality of life like when you're actually living you're not living yeah and that's the whole issue right there so the very like sad thing for me is that when we're young, we don't often think 30 years, 50 years ahead. And right. so we don't value that thing that we have most, which is our health. Definitely. And when you reach to my age and, and older than me, we look back and we say, oh, if only I knew. So it's time, you know, that, that everybody starts paying attention. If you're older, you need to listen now. If you're younger, you still need to listen now. It's yes. really, really the most important message that's that's right. definitely help as well <laughs>
So, Didi, I hope that once in a while we can continue to have these interviews because I'm sure you have more inspiration to share. Oh, yeah, sure, no problem. I enjoyed it, so I'm ready. <laughs> Thanks so much for everything. Thanks, Susan. Thanks for having me. me. We'll talk after the interview. Sure, no problem. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody, and thanks for joining us.